Hi everyone, my name's Cameron and welcome to the Martial Arts Flexibility Channel where we bring you all the information you need to know to meet your flexibility goals. Now, this is week one of our Beyond Grappling Mobility Month, so thanks very much Matt for having me. And today is all about stretching your expectations. There's a lot of misinformation around stretching and I thought I'd take the opportunity today before we get into any exercises to go through some things that you need to know before you start. So, because everyone likes lists, here are my top five things that you need to know before you start stretching. Number one, patience. Now, we live in a world of instant results. You know, it's Instagram or, or Facebook. We see the before and the after. We see the 28 day shreds, the 10 day juice cleanses, the seven minute abs. And as much as I wanna buy into it, and I'm sure you do too, because I, I want it to be that way. We all know it doesn't work that way. Anything worth having is going to take time and effort. And just imagine that you walk into a, you've never trained martial arts before, you walk into a new school and you go up to the instructor and you say, so what, what are we talking about here? Is it two weeks, four weeks, how long can I get my black belt? We, we, we all know that doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. So stretching is no different. It takes repeated time and effort and consistency to get you the results that you want. And if you put in the effort, you will get the results. Number two, how long does it take? Uh, that, that's a million dollar question and probably the first thing anyone thinks of, especially with something like flexibility. And it really depends on what you want. Do you want the Van Dam with a side serving a Norris? Do you want to uh, be able to just have better guard retention? Do you want to have, be able to enter for an Asotogari without blowing your knee out? Or do you just want to roll out of bed in the morning without your back hurting? Your goal will determine how long it will take. Um, and there's lots of other factors that go into it as well about you, know, you your training history and, and your stress levels, that kind of thing. But the main thing is, as we spoke about, number one, just consistently and applying yourself. But it's important, the most important key here is to set yourself a goal, understand kind of what it is you're looking at, and then you can train accordingly. Number three, I'm just not flexible. Never been flexible. I can't get flexible. Now, I understand where you're coming from. And let me tell you a story. It was the mid 90s, I was in year nine or 10, and we were doing our fitness testing at Blackburn High School. Shout out to Mr. Francis if you're watching. So we'd done the flexed arm hang, the broad jump, and I'm pretty sure the beat test was in there somewhere too. And then we came to the sit and reach, which is where they have that, that wooden contraption with the ruler attached. So you sit your feet up this way, and then you fold forward to see what your, what your reach is. Negative 17 over here. Negative 17. So forget about touching your toes. I couldn't even touch my ankles. And then fast forward 10 plus years and I got my first open front split randomly after a, a keto class. It was in my late 20s. Couldn't replicate that. And I got my first replicable front split when I was 40 years old. Now, and that was almost two years ago now. So, two things to, to consider here. One, I never, took, I never took stretching seriously. It didn't take me 25 years to get flexible. I, just, I wasn't serious about it until recently. Number two, is that I found the right way to stretch for me. For me, it was using more strength. And that allowed me to get a greater range in a shorter period of time. But in a lot, it didn't take me a long time to get flexible. It was just finding what worked for me and then applying it consistently. Number four, strength. In order to get the best out of your flexibility and stay as injury free as possible, you need to get strong. And this goes for whether you're talking your shoulders, you know, upper body, upper body flexibility, your hips, hamstring, quads, whatever it is. You need to get strong in those ranges that you're going to use. You may not need to develop extreme flexibility, 
But whatever range you decide that you're going to use needs to be strength based. Um, and a, a good example of this is, you know, for someone who kicks, if you just throw your leg out there and you keep throwing and throwing your leg because you don't have the control to in control to place your leg in those positions, it's an injury waiting to happen. The perfect example of I know this guy who was training for his black belt and was doing tons and tons of you know turning hook kicks and well as you can see for yourself I mean as if the pants aren't bad enough that was a torn hip flexor and four months on the sidelines and no which is which is not great it's, it's what you don't want but strength is going to give you the greatest gains and the greatest ability to maintain your flexibility with the least amount of effort possible. Number five, training versus testing your flexibility. Often we'll fall into one or two camps with flexibility. You'll have these guys, and then you'll have these guys. And what you've got over here, you've got the you got the guy who's kind of half-assing it and he's going to get results applicable to that versus the guy who's going 110%, pushing his limits every day he stretches. And what you find, this guy's not putting in the effort. This guy is, is testing his stretching every time he goes in there. And your body is smarter than that. And what this is, this your body's going... Mate, you're putting me at risk because I'm close to my limit or at my limit, you're pushing past it, and I don't trust you to go there. What we need to do is we need to find a middle ground with less of this, more of this, and some of this. And what that does is it gives you the body, your body, the ability to feel comfortable and say, okay, yeah, we can we can go into that range. And then you build strength there, you get comfortable there, and then you go a little bit further. And your body begins to trust you that you're allowed to able to go into that range that you want, get that stretch that you want, and that you're not going to hurt yourself. So while there's a time for testing, we need to spend more time training our flexibility because that's where we're going to get our results. And there you have it. There's my top five things that you should know before you start stretching. So in the coming videos, of Mobility Month of Beyond Grappling, we'll go through some of the stretches and exercises that I would start on to work towards your flexibility goals. And if you have any questions, any comments, throw them down below. I'll be sure to check back and answer as many of them as I can. Uh, if you're not already following Beyond Grappling, I mean, come on, give it a follow, uh, like the video. If you wouldn't mind heading over to my channel, the Martial Arts Flexibility Channel, please do be much appreciated and thanks for your time. Look forward to seeing you next week.